Welcome to Tokyo Disney Sea. My name is Luke, this is my twin brother Paul, and we're gonna take you on a tour of the attractions, entertainment, food, and merchandise that we experienced on our adventure at Tokyo Disney Sea. Your intro to Disney Sea starts on the monorail, which is already iconic and famous in and of itself, but you're greeted with this view of the SS Columbia, which just gives you a taste of the sheer scale you're going to experience in the park. Maricosta. Maricosta. Now that one costs a was, pretty penny. If I was a millionaire. You don't have to be a millionaire to stay there, but for reference, they do cost anywhere from $400 to $5,000 a night. That being said, it only costs around $60 to $70, depending on the exchange rate, per park ticket per day. Um, you can only buy a single day ticket right now, not a park hopper. It's only Disney Sea or Disneyland. But for $60, that's a steal. One thing you need to be aware if you're coming to Japan, lines are long and people don't mind waiting. So, yeah. and also they move fast. They're very they do. efficient. Yeah, they're very efficient. Well, people are staring at looking like we're dressed exactly like. <laughs> As you enter the park, you're greeted with this giant globe that is a representation of the heart of the park, which is the sea. The first thing we noticed in the park, well, other than the scale, was the music. It was grand and the way it swelled made you feel like you were the main character in an adventure movie about to embark on some dangerous mission. It made me feel the same way the score at the beginning of Treasure Planet made me feel. A few years ago, my friend Matthew came and he described the park as a storybook. And I gotta say, yes and. It's like a pop-up storybook. Every port you enter unfolds into myths and legends of the sea crafted into reality by these incredible Imagineers. Let's take a tour of this park and discover if it is truly the greatest theme park in the world. This is so cool. So these are hotel rooms as well. It is so different because nothing is forced perspective. You are welcomed into the park by Mount Prometheus and the Mediterranean Harbor. This is a center point for the park and a lot of things happen around this lagoon. This is where all the parades happen throughout the day on boats as well as the nighttime spectacular. We started our adventure in Venice. This is directly to the left of the entrance of the park. You have to go underneath the hotel to find it. This area is surrounded by actual hotel rooms, giving a level of immersion I have not yet experienced at a theme park. First ride of the day, the gondolas. The gondolas allow for a magical adventure through the heart of Venice. The amazing thing about this ride is that you never feel like you leave the Mediterranean coast, even though you technically could go right underneath New York. It's a testament to great Imagineering. On this ride, the I want to know what they're called. Oh, a gondolier. That's easy. Our gondoliers did an entire presentation, mostly in Japanese, but anything we needed to know was presented in English as well. Uh, we learned how to say ciao, which would allow us to greet the people on the bridges and also the other gondolas passing us by. Ciao. 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 And if you know anything about us, you know that greeting other people on any ride is our favorite part of any attraction. <laughs> This is not something about the parks, but I just love the rhythm of hearing people speak Japanese. I am on day 137 of my Japanese Duolingo streak. Not sponsored, of course. But this video is sponsored by our generous patrons over on Patreon. Over on Patreon, you can see video tutorials on dances, dance classes, how we set up our camera equipment, and much, much more. This is an area we want to really invest in you. So we want this to be a, an ever-evolving platform where you get to be a part of what we create. So if you're interested, you can jump on over. The link is in our bio. That was so cool. That was legit the coolest. Next, we headed into New York City. This is the beginning of the American waterfront port of the park. This includes New York, Tower of Terror, Toy Story Mania, the SS Columbia, and Cape Cod. There is so much to do in this area, and we were not able to get to everything, but here's what we did. Mr. Ducks, departu. That means Mr. Ducks department store in Japanese. Uh, we started here because it houses a lot of merchandise for Duffy. It is widely recognized that this is Duffy's park, and Duffy and his friends have a chokehold on the merchandise at Tokyo Disney Sea. Uh, Duff, my boy. I want a Duffy so bad, but I don't want to have to take it home. Let's see. I might have found the first purchase. Oh, I freaking love the pink cat. I know, that cat's cute. Well, I mean, that or I just really like what the cast member is doing with her. Right. Just owning it. Owning the interaction. So cute. <laughs> the oh, Duffy. Yeah. The Duffy. Like, look at this. This is the theater. It's just, yeah, huge. This theater houses Big Band Beat. We'll come back to that later in this video. The New York City Waterworks is the restroom. That's Classic. Building is. 
Oh, oh my god. Queues in Japan can get very, very long. And so we had to be very choosy with what we decided to actually wait in line for. And Toy Story Mania did not make the cut. But it was a lot of fun to explore the land and see some of the fun little arcade type games that they had around, which allowed kids and adults to enjoy the magic of Toy Story without having to wait for the ride. First attraction of the day, Tower of Terror. Technically second because the gondolas were our first attraction Touché. of the day. Touche. While waiting in line, Tracy got us a sea salt ice cream Minoka to try. It was very good. Uh, the ice cream inside is on another level. I don't know what they do in Japan, but the ice cream is amazing. It had a little layer of jam on top as well. The coating was like softer than I wanted it to be. I wanted it to be crunchy, but it wasn't. Paul really enjoyed it. I just didn't like the outside. The thing that sets this Tower of Terror apart is the queue. It is a storytelling feat because a lot of it is in Japanese. We as Americans didn't fully understand the storyline, but all of the set dressings, the props, and the pre-show all allowed us to get a very, very full picture of generally the idea of what the story of the ride was. If you want the whole story, I do recommend reading a synopsis while you're in line. Holy cow. The queue, just this, I, the whole park, but the queues are always so hyper themed and, and it's yeah. very immersive. They're pretty really, really like, incredible. I mean, it's, yeah, it was really cool. The ride itself is so good. It's a ride, it's familiar. The storyline they tell is, is completely different. I also think that like, it was worth the wait. The experience of riding it with the Japanese people, there was a guy right behind us that like literally was screaming bloody murder. And it's like a, a very familiar ride to be like, oh, I scream and holler and whoop and stuff. But like, he was like, it was, he was, he, was, he was petrified. He was petrified, yeah. and I was here for it. Not Paul relishing the terror of this man. I was like, what kind did you get? This is berry cheesecake. Ooh. It's not my favorite, but it was pretty it's good. It's pretty good? Yeah. Yeah, it's shot. Oh my god. Yeah. I like it. Yeah, it's a little very sweeter acidic. than I wanted. But yeah, I was going to say that it's acidic enough to balance it out. So um, the boys probably won't tell you this, but they get a lot of attention from the ladies <laughs> in this park. They all think they're so quiet. Oh. <laughs> and we're dressed the same too, so it doesn't really it makes it worse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they 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 do love them, and you'll see them like side eye. The boys probably don't even notice, but these girls definitely. There was a couple them in out. line that every time you come past the turnstile, they'd freak out they'd a little like, bit. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So this uh, boat, Tracy was just telling me, is a walkthrough experience, but also uh, turtle talk, turtle talk crush. crush. Yeah. This is so cool. It's like a real life cruise ship. Like it feels like you're. Going up to the top deck, Huge. you know? Oh wow, we are massive. Interactive entertainment is very popular in Japan and we love that. This was the Jamboree Mickey Let's Dance show right outside the SS Columbia. It was a lot of fun. I do wish we would have stood either behind the gates so we could have danced a little bit more full out or on the top floor of the SS Columbia. We did see some other people standing up there and I was like, that is genius, we should have done that. But just so you know, if you go, Stand where you can actually dance. Because when you're sitting down, it's a little difficult to actually do the movements that they're teaching you. Definitely something to check out with kids or if you're just a kid at heart. Okay, this is really cute. Um, the cast members uh, in New York here are taking pictures of people's costumes. And like they've got a camera, like a vintage looking camera, and they're taking pictures of them and writing it down on a notepad. So I don't know if they're like <laughs> having a costume contest or something today, <laughs> but it's precious. After that, we made our way to Cape Cod. This area is an amazing place to take photos. There's also the entrance to the steamboat there. There's a Duffy meet and greet and a Duffy show. It's a, connected to like the cook-off restaurant. It's a really pretty area. There's also a shop there as well. This drink is for you, Matthew, but since it won't make it back home, it's in your honor. But we did get you a souvenir Skeletoni uh, Velcro um, like coffee sleeve. This is such a cute drink. It's got like uh... I don't know how I feel about jellies. <laughs> Give it to me. Give it to me. Yeah, that's like a ice cream. Mm -hmm. Oh, the top. I like jellies. It's good. It's just that I wasn't. Oh, that's very good. That's oh, really good. Face. Oh, do I have it? It's big! Very unique combo. It's roast beef, potato and salad, peach. I'm gonna put my spicy sauce away by. I did, in fact, put too much of this on, and it did end up on my shirt. Permanently staining it. <sighs> this bread is unmatched. That's Ola is Raquel from uh, TikTok and Instagram. She was one of the first choreographers that we learned from on TikTok. Um, and During we've never pandemic. met. We've been close to meeting each other. What are, the, what are the odds we're all at Disney Sea on the same day? I know. <laughs> In Japan. <sighs> so oh. exciting. I love, I'm loving, I just love this park so much. I know. Okay, we just had the coolest experience. While walking into Port Discovery, we were recognized from the internet by our new friend Kizuki and his friends. Came up over with his friends Nishi, Tsuyoka, and Yoshi and introduced us to everybody. We ended up getting to do a dance with Kizuki and Tsuyoka and it was just a magical experience. And Yoshi filmed it. Yeah, Yoshi filmed it for us and Nishi did a lot of translation. It was just 
it was really great. So now we're on our way to Big Band Beat, which is important because their friend is a dancer, a tap dancer in that show. Although we had just gotten to Port Discovery, we hopped on the train and headed back into 1920s New York. This is a attraction in and of itself. The views, the sounds, the music, all of this puts you back in the 1920s New York state of mind. We had some time to kill and we wanted to try some more food, so we skipped on over to the New York Deli before the show. We grabbed their Halloween special, which is a spicy chicken and pumpkin gratin with french fries and our choice of a soft drink. Are you surprised? We got coffee. Look, so good, and then fries and hot coffees, and Luke went and grabbed us some waters. I ran over to this Vindy to get water, and it was kind of embarrassing. I didn't really understand. I wish you could, like, select three, but you have to do it individually every time. So people that were queuing up behind me, I was like, sorry, sorry, sorry. After that, we headed to the theater to watch Big Band Beat. If you're new to the channel, you may not know this, but Paul and I are professional dancers and we have a super soft spot for tap dancing, which means that this show is right up our alley. Now, we weren't able to film this exact show, so you won't be able to see the actual friend of our friends who was dancing today, but this is the promo from Dizzy themselves. The skill that it takes to perform this show is insane. Our friend's friend played the lead tap track and he blew us away. It's very high skill. You know the people doing this show have been tapping for most of their life, if not all of their life. Um, Mickey Mouse is the star of the show, which isn't really a big surprise, but he actually tap dances and he actually plays the drums, which is unheard of in the American parks. No matter what, this is something you need to see. Oh, thank you, my friend. Right. Oh, thank you, guys. Thank luck. you. Have a good day. It was so good. This is sweet soy. Soy? Sugar. Oh, sweet soy sugar. What do you think? They don't taste soggy like the Disney World ones yeah, do. Fresh. Yeah. Like fairly fresh anyways. Yeah. I don't know if they're any chut, but they, yeah. they are coming out Oh, it's slightly savory. Mm -hmm. They end a savory. Oh, right. what? You might be able to tell by my face that I would rate this about a 5 out of 10. The savory aftertaste was just not it for me. Mm. That is good. And as you can see here, Paul thought it was great. Churro in hand, we headed back to Port Discovery to ride Aquatopia. This was actually one of my bucket list items, to be honest. And I know that sounds lame, but I was very excited to ride this ride. This ride is considered to be a successor to both Disneyland's motorboat cruise and the Autopia. I, I totally thought you drove these. You know, it's on a trackless system, and I kind of love that. Are you ready? Whee! Why am I smiling so big? I'm smiling so big, my face hurts. This is crazy. This is gonna tense. The whole Port Discovery area is themed to the retro-futuristic research stations of the world of science fiction novels and films from the early 20th century. The main attraction here is the Marine Life Institute, which is the Nemo ride here, uh, talking about how they discovered a way to make a giant submarine very small so it wouldn't scare the fish away. And it's a very, very cute attraction, I would say as me being Luke. I didn't love this ride. I thought it was kind of fun. It's okay, but Paul loved this ride. The execution of the queue and pre-show with the actual ride itself and the 4D theater experience, I thought was really good. Oh my gosh, you can hardly tell the difference in our voices. We haven't really been in this part of the park yet. We have only been on the kind of the other side, but there's just peaceful waters. This area of the park is called the Lost River Delta. This area of the park houses the Indiana Jones Adventure, Temple of the Crystal School ride, and Raging Spirits, which is a compact roller coaster. That is massive. Paul and I had already ridden Indiana Jones um, at Disneyland, so we decided to skip that ride because of the line and go to Raging Spirits, which is right next door. This tiny little roller coaster packs a powerful punch with a full loop-to-loop -loop and a lot of G-force. <laughs> the best part of this ride actually came from an interaction with another guest who photobombed one of our photos while we were taking pictures in line, and we ended up talking using Google Translate to get to know her and her husband. It was a wonderful experience. I don't know how to explain it. Like It was a wonderful interaction with another human. We thrive on human connection, and the local people in Japan really met us where we were at and created some really special moments. We ended up riding in the same group on the front of the roller coaster. Thank you for going with us. Yes. <laughs> use Google Translate to have a conversation in line. It was very yes. good. Amazing technology. We then headed over to the Arabian coast to ride Simbad's my most anticipated ride at Tokyo Disney Sea. The wait times for Simbad are always typically low, and that's because of its complicated history. The one ride I was most excited about and have looked forward to the most. This dark ride always has a short line, and that's mostly due to its unpopular history. It opened in 2001 alongside Disney Sea as a day one attraction, and it was unpopular from the beginning because it was very scary, especially with a younger audience. So they had to retheme it with a lighter tone, add an animal sidekick. And it's still not the most popular, but Alan Menken's musical tone and the animatronics are all absolutely incredible. And even with a retheme, it doesn't feel like a retheme. I highly recommend this ride. Something! Another 
So we're, ed we're exiting Simed's area, which is still kind of Middle Eastern, kind of, but we're going into Agrabah, so I'm excited about this. The Arabian coast is strongly themed around the 1992 animated feature, Aladdin, and it feels like you should be running away from some soldiers after stealing some bread. Welcome to Agrabah. We weren't able to do much in this area because we were running out of daylight, so we did a little quick dance video to an Aladdin song and grab some popcorn. Curry popcorn! Gotta try that. Is it green curry? The brown No, I brown. It's, it's like Japanese. I like curry. it. It's very good. Oh, that's. It was so good, I forgot to finish my thought. They do do popcorn good here. We then headed into the mysterious island, which is at the base of the big centerpiece volcano. This is the part that feels a lot like a puppet book. You enter through these tunnels and it opens up to this giant lagoon straight out of a Charles Verne novel. This area hosts a restaurant, a merchandise stand, and two very popular attractions. Those attractions are 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea and Journey to the Center of the Earth. Thankfully, we had two days at Disney Sea, so we did Journey on one day and 20,000 Leagues on another. 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea is very similar to the Finding Nemo submarine voyage in California Disneyland, except better with a cohesive storyline and much better theming. I do think this would fit better in the Disney catalog if it was themed after Atlantis, but that's just my own personal bias because I freaking love Atlantis. Although I do understand the timelessness of Charles Verne and how it fits within the mysterious island. Journey to the Center of the Earth is similar to Test Track in Epcot in Orlando, except it actually has Disney charm. It's set up sort of like a dark ride, where you're experiencing a lot of different animatronics and story points that then leads you into a roller coaster esque adventure throughout the entire volcano, ending with a volcanic monster. The ending of the ride is quite thrilling, which we thoroughly enjoyed. After surviving the volcano, we headed under the sea to the Mermaid Lagoon. This port is themed after Ariel's Grotto, actually Ariel's World. I'm obsessed with things underwater, so this was like the cartoon version of my dream. You're greeted by King Triton, and then you walk into an area with a bunch of carnival-esque rides themed around things under the sea. When you walk in, you're at ground level, and then you immediately start going down like pretty shallow, but still, I mean, decent slope, and it makes you feel like you're walking underwater. Not us trying to change people filming so that we can, like, you know, show both of us. The problem is we look the same, and we're wearing the same thing, so. We've been looking for these now. I don't know, these may be kids. I think they're, this is all the size they have is a 50, and I am assuming we kind of use this as a form and it's a little bit smaller. So we're gonna buy one and see if it fits. Just try. And then just try. The employee wouldn't sell it to us. He said it was for a child and that it wouldn't fit. But we keep making new friends. Like we were, the, some people were on like the teacups. We, we were like waving at them and we were cheering them on as they went, went around and around and they were screaming, like waving back and stuff. We would say, Kawaii! Yeah, Kawaii! As they, as they came by. And then they came out and they wanted to get a picture together. So yes. here's that picture because I just warms my heart how friendly people are and how just, it's great. We're gonna go try to meet up with our friends from earlier today at the fireworks. We're gonna see if we can find them. If not, whatever. But we wanna go watch the Nighttime Spectacular. I am so glad we got to attend the Nighttime Spectacular because it is spectacular. There's projections on Hotel Maracosta and Mount Prometheus, and there's also these big barges. So there's a big barge in the center that has like fireworks and stuff like that. It comes out just for this. And then you have a bunch of these character barges that have these LED screens on the side that go up and down. I'm not really sure how it works, but they'll like, it will like hide dancers or characters and then reveal them. And it'll reveal set pieces sometimes like Moana's ship. It is just a really creative way to get characters and things up high. It ends up being really cool. It makes them look like they're floating sometimes. There's jet skis with like these glowing things kind of like you see at Epcot sometimes. Definitely recommend you get there early and get a good seat. There really isn't a bad spot around the lagoon in my mind. We were kind of on the front end a little bit, but it wasn't necessarily a better seat than anywhere else in the lagoon. I am so glad that our friends saved us a spot because this place fills up so fast. So I would get there early if you really want a good spot for this show. It feels even more magical in Japanese. I don't know why. Very good. After that, we did some shopping with our new friends. Boo! Yeah. Trick or treat? Oh, it's your color. <laughs> yeah. It's my color. Yeah. So I might, I might have to get this because he said it's my color. Well, and it is true. Color. We Black is my color. For me now. Yeah. There we go. Luke and I each got one of these, and I'm so glad because we wore them so much. And we still are wearing them so much. <laughs> what do we think? Oh, oh okay. good boy. Yeah. We talked about this in our last Tokyo Disneyland video, that this is actually a shared fireworks show with Tokyo Disneyland. Um, this will go off after the nighttime spectacular and before the park closes. So 
Something you can be aware of if you miss it at Disneyland, you can see it at Disney Sea. After the park closed, we headed over to the main monorail station where there's some shops and like restaurants. Got food with our new friends. Tempa! The best part about this meal was not the food. The food was great, don't get me wrong. And there's almost never a bad meal in Japan. But the thing that made this meal special was getting to share it with new friends that you had made that day. This is like squid ink, paella. And this and is squid. like squid. Squid and squid ink. Muy bien. A burger. We also got to dance again with Kizuki and Everyone in this group was so welcoming. This was a magical friendship made by simple recognition, and I'm so glad that we were able to meet and hang out with these wonderful people. Luke has been doing the voiceover this whole video, but uh, this is Paul for a second. So Yoka gave me this hat on the last day because she said it was my color, and I only had a white hat, which I just thought was really precious, and I tried not to let her give it to me, but she insisted, so I took it, and I love this hat because of the memories that it holds. Some exciting news about Tokyo Disney Sea is that they are adding an eighth port of call to this park. It will be Fantasy Springs. It promises to immerse guests in the land of Frozen, Tangled, and Peter Pan. This land is set to open in June 2024. It will include four attractions, restaurants, shops, and a luxury hotel overlooking the Tokyo Disney Resort. You will enter this new park through a newly created pathway between the Lost River Delta and the Arabian Coast. Have you ever been to Tokyo Disney Sea? If so, what are things we missed that we should definitely see next time? Well, Paul, that was Disney. I really enjoyed Tokyo Disney Resort. It was an incredible experience. If you ever get the opportunity, definitely check it out. It's, well worth it. It's on another level. Yeah. It really is a beautiful park. The Both. scale is unmatched. It is like beautiful, it's clean. The people are so friendly and nice. Even if you don't speak a lick of Japanese, you can easily be fine here. Yeah, it's great. Anyway, we'll see you guys in another video real soon. Don't die, okay, bye. On our last day, after we've bought everything we wanted to and gotten chili stains on all our shirts, I'm obsessed. I just wanted to try them on for a real quick.